Hello, this is Geo Techland, and today I'm going to be taking a look at Manjaro version 21.1.0. And generally, I always look at the GNOME version just because it's easier to compare it to something like Ubuntu or Pop! OS. So this is just the start, Manjaro Hello. I can disable this here. I was expecting this welcome tour, but I guess there really isn't any kind of welcome tour, which is something I definitely recommend they have. So for those of you that don't know, Manjaro is based on Arch. Instead of installing Arch yourself, this is kind of like an, an Arch-based install that is designed to be used for almost the average user. And the reason why I say almost is that Manjaro is a bit more bleeding edge compared to other distros, especially other Ubuntu or Debian-based distros. So if I go ahead and open the terminal here, I'm going to do a NeoFetch just to see what we're working with. So with Manjaro, the kernel installed by default is kernel 5.13, which is a fairly recent kernel. And it is also using a very recent version of GNOME, which in this case is GNOME 40.3. If we take a look at the show applications button here, we can see that this does look a little bit different than GNOME 3, especially with the workspaces being displayed here on top. This isn't quite vanilla GNOME 40, because the dock here is actually visible everywhere. That's the one cool thing about Manjaro. I think they made the right tweak here because I think most people are expecting a dock and a show applications by default. And it's just kind of odd that GNOME 40 doesn't have it by default. The very first thing I'm going to look at is the layout chooser. And this is the layout chooser that you can find on a distro like Zorin, except that this layout switcher is a lot better for a number of reasons. First of all, they're actually named, which is something that I think is very helpful. And they give you many different options. On the Zorin free version, you don't get all these other options unless you go to their paid version. So right now we're using Manjaro's own theme, which is a slight tweak of GNOME 40. You go to Manjaro Legacy and hit apply here. You're going to see it's more of a tweak of GNOME 3, which again, they leave at the dock by default here on the left hand side then if we go to a more traditional layout and hit apply here hey we get a more windows 10 like experience then if we go unity we get more of a ubuntu unity type of a layout and then of course we can do gnome 40 vanilla and of course there's no panels by default and if you hit the activities menu you get the dock here which looks pretty huge um, but this is what you'll get with GNOME 40. So something like Fedora usually ships with vanilla GNOME. And then there's a tiling option, which makes it easier if you want to multitask. You can open up applications and they'll just open up in different tabs here. So you can make some additional tweaks here. But anyhow, their layout switcher is by far the best and my personal favorite. Just because they have all these options. And I'm glad that their default choice is very user friendly with the dock being enabled. Even the show applications, I like how they do it, how they have the desktop here. I think it's very well done. As far as their default theme, that's where they could use some improvement. Their default like look and feel is kind of stale. You can usually get away with an uglier theme if it's dark mode, so it doesn't look too bad. If we go to the extensions, you can see a list of the extensions that they've installed by default. Especially when it comes to performance, they do have something like a game mode as an option, although it's not enabled right now. Looks like it could be easily enabled, so that's very good because the game mode does improve CPU performance. So if you're going to be doing some Steam Proton gaming here, that can come in handy. And it looks like they've also included a GNOME 40 UI improvements, and I think that might have been their own extension that they've added. That explains why the dock is enabled there by default so now let's take a look at which mesa driver we're using here it's 21.1.6 so definitely a much newer version so that's going to help with gaming as well especially if you're on an amd gpu which i recommend for anyone that wants to go open source of course if you're using an nvidia gpu you're probably using their versions and their updates so you'll probably be okay there now the one other cool thing that I really liked about Manjaro is their own kernel selector. 
you can install a kernel as simple as if you were installing an app. And I really like that. Um, it was a big reason why I like Manjaro for gaming. Right now it's using 5.13, but once there is a 5.14 stable version, you can easily install it. Of course, you know, always back up everything, but I've had no issues installing different kernels. They've made this a very good experience, but again, it could use improvement by incorporating it better to the OS, maybe improve the UI of this uh, window. But this is one of those features that makes it uh, really good for gaming. And then they use their own software center. And although it is somewhat simple compared to the Pop! OS or elementary style app center, or even the GNOME software center, it is very functionally useful. If I go to the preferences, I can enable flat packs. And I guess I could enable the AUR, but for now I'm just going to enable flat packs. And now at least for Discord, it looks like you get, you're now getting the flat pack, flat hub option. Let me try Spotify again here. Okay, it looks like now you get the flat pack version. That's pretty cool. Again, it, it would be nice though if you can type in Spotify, just find one app and be able to choose the flat pack version on the like top right corner. That's how Pop! OS is doing it. And I think it, it just makes for a better experience. But overall, even though there's other distros that cater a little bit more to gaming, for example, Garuda Linux includes like Steam and more gaming tools like Lutris by default. I think Manjaro is still a very solid OS, fairly stable. Even an average user should be able to use this and get by. But if you want that bleeding edge, updated versions of kernels or Mesa drivers, then Manjaro is going to work great for you. But let me know your thoughts. Do you recommend Manjaro for gaming, for more advanced users, for average users, or are there other better distros for them? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you like my video, please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you all next time. If you're enjoying my content, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, PeerTube, follow me on Odyssey. You can also support me on LiberaPay, Patreon, and by shopping at Earth Hero. See links in the description below.